Hi, my name is Mike, and I normally record videos on car repairs and computer repairs. In this video, we're going to be showing something a little bit different. We're going to be showing the installation process for Blindster.com Sheer Shades, also known as Zebra Blinds. I'm recording this video because we've been installing these blinds around our house, and I had a really challenging time getting them installed correctly the first time. The instructions on Blindster.com and what come with the blinds, I didn't feel like they're very clear. They don't accurately show the blinds or the installation hardware that comes with them. So that's why I wanted to record this to hopefully help anyone else out that is searching, as I did, on the internet and trying to find good, accurate instructions how to install these blinds. I'm going to be installing this one in the window behind us here might be a little bit difficult for me because of the placement of this closet door, but hopefully I'll be able to get it up there okay with the closet being slightly in the way. I'm going to walk around the house also and show you some of the other finished installations that we've already completed. I will show you the parts that come with the blind and I'll show you the tools that you need to install these. So to get started, this is the blind as it comes. We you probably noticed me messing with this cord here on the side. This is the nylon chain. And they give you a couple options for a nylon chain or a metal chain. And I would have thought that the metal chain would be more durable. But from what I found online is that the metal chain can kink or bind in the assembly. So we opted for the nylon chain on all of ours. And hopefully that will work out for us in the future. That it uh, you know will be as durable as I hope it is. There's also the bracket, the hold down bracket here on the end of the chain. When these blinds come, they are labeled with, let's see, where is it? Inside mount, all right, right here on the top. Hopefully this shows up okay. You can see it is bedroom three. And I'm glad that we did that. We labeled each one in the ordering process so that we would know where they go because the measurements are a little bit different for each one. So we would know where it goes, how to put it up. In addition to the blind, you'll receive a packet of an external bracket. This is for if you're mounting it on the outside of a window frame. You'll receive some terrible instructions. Check this in the trash and a whole bunch of warnings don't strangle your children with the blind cords. You'll also receive these two hold down brackets. We did have an issue with one of our larger blinds. We have a blind that's 57 inches and anything over 48 inches they should send you three. One for each side and one for in the middle. They didn't send us enough so I had to reach out to customer service and get them to send us another one. So that's just one of the challenges that we faced with installing these is that you know, not only do the parts that they provide you not match what's shown in the instructions or in their instructional training videos, they don't send you enough of them sometimes. So you might have to go back and forth to get the right installation parts. You should also receive six hex head screws for holding those brackets in and two regular Phillips screws for attaching the cord hold down to your wall. You're going to need a few tools. Drill. Tape measure. Pencil. Screwdriver might come in handy. And I recommend getting yourself an extension with a quarter inch nut driver on there. This will help you put those hold down bolts in, especially if you have a hard to reach window frame. You also need drill bits. In particular, 564 seems to be the best size. Before I get started installing our new blind, I wanted to show you a few of the installs that I've already completed. The one thing I wanted to point out is how deep the cassette that holds the blind is. You can see here that with the inside mount it requires about three inches of, of depth on your window frame in order for it to be fully recessed 
which I think is the best appearance there. If your window frame is not deep enough, it may stick out a little bit. For example, in this one, you can see the frame is only about two inches. Uh, it's under two inches of depth. And move the camera around a little with less glare. You can see how the blind cassette protrudes somewhat from the window frame. So these are very deep. And I had a hard time getting a good understanding of the measurements from their website, but hopefully this video is helpful. And you can see how that hold down clip for the nylon cord just screws into the window frame. Here is the 57 inch wide blind that I mentioned earlier. And anything for this width should have three brackets on it. One on either side and one in the middle. And here's our dog coming to help me out. This is one of our older style faux wood plastic blinds, which we're in the process of replacing with the zebra blinds. Over here behind the treadmill is another one of the new zebra blinds. You'll see on this one, we opted for a uh, right side pull cord, just so I'm not having to reach so far over the treadmill to get to it. And as part of the ordering process, you have the option to get that cord on either the left side or the right side. Another question that I had was, how do these look from the outside? And looking through the product literature, you'll see a ton of pictures of how they look from the inside of the house, but how do they look from the outside? How, do, how does this affect your curb appeal? So I wanted to include a brief walkthrough of the outside here so you can see how they look from the outside. I might be biased, but I think they look pretty good. Here's the window I'm about to do. One of the other bedroom windows. The big one. another small one. One other type of curtain we've been installing recently is this pull-down window shade that we installed on our back door here. I mentioned that the shade didn't include any installation hardware at all. I had to cut apart a metal yardstick to make a bracket and I'll include some pictures of how I did that in the slideshow at the end of this video. So to start with your install I like to take my tape measure and hold it about three inches to the inside of the window frame and then just take your pencil and make a little mark on either side. Next, take those brackets that I showed you earlier and hold one of those up, roughly centered to where you made your mark. Push it back so that it's flush against the back of the window frame. And again, taking your pencil, just circle where the installation, where the screws should go through. Next, take your drill with the 564th bit and pre-drill the holes for the installation screws. Next step, you want to take your drill with your quarter inch drive socket and using the brackets that I showed you earlier, go ahead and get that lined up with your holes that you pre-drilled. And 
using the six screws that came with it. I like to start each screw a little bit before getting it flush. Once you have your brackets in place, you need to take the cassette with your blind in it and hold that up in here. If you haven't already, it's usually a good time to make sure that your cassette is the correct width, which assuming you measure properly, it should be. And it just kind of presses into place here. Once it's in there, you can also check it from the bottom. To verify that the clips caught the back edge as well. Once you've finished mounting the cassette, the last thing you'll need to do is mount the hold down bracket for the cord. And to do that, just kind of find the lowest. I just kind of eyeball this and make sure it's basically straight. Find the lowest point, hold it down, and then I kind of release about an eighth of an inch or so just so that it's not super, super tight. Take your pencil, mark those holes. Your drill. A Phillips head screw bit. And then I do just kind of finish off those screws with a regular screwdriver because you are screwing into plastic here. You don't want to over tighten that and crack your plastic piece. And that's pretty much it. Our last step is to pull the cord and test it and make sure that it opens and closes correctly. Or if you got really fancy, you can pay the extra 150 or so dollars. You can have the motorized version where you can con connect these to your Amazon Alexa or Google Home and have it automatically open and close the shades for you. This looks great to me, and as you can see, it's just the right length to cover the window all the way. And there's other options, color choices, different types of materials, darkening ones. The selection of materials is great, but as I mentioned at the beginning, I didn't feel like the installation process was very intuitive or easy to do with the instructions they provided. 
If this video has been helpful to you, please like and subscribe to my channel. I hope to do a lot of other different types of home improvement videos in the future. And I will follow this up with a slideshow showing some additional pictures of installation process. Thank you, have a great day, and stay safe out there.